I am working on a project called the American Archive of Public Broadcasting, uh, which is a collaboration between WGBH, which is a public broadcaster in the United States located in Boston, and the Library of Congress, um, which is our national library. Um, it was a, initially started by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, who provided our initial funding. And we have, over the last two years, completed the digitization of 40,000 hours of public broadcasting television and radio content, contributed by about one hundred public broadcasting stations across the country and we're preserving those materials at the Library of Congress and um, as much as possible trying to make them available online for people to watch and listen. If I'm correct in assuming, I think that in Europe, oftentimes when materials are donated to an archive, is the copyright transferred to the archive in a lot of cases? Um, well, in the United States, um, in, in our project specifically, it's been very difficult to navigate those copyright issues. Um, the co there are often multiple copyright owners in the, our, the materials in our archive. Um, and uh, oftentimes contracts weren't kept, uh, so sometimes we don't even know who the copyright owner is and who owns the third party content within the full programs. Uh, so that has been a challenge for us. Um, and we have had support by, uh, by our contributing organizations. I, as I said in my presentation, about 80% of our contributing organizations were really enthusiastic about letting us make their collections available online. Um, so uh, beyond uh, their permission, we have to think about um, about the third party content, which has been a challenge for us, but we have so far been able to make available around 10,000 full programs online. Well, I've been following the EU Screen project for at least two years now. I'm really inspired by everything that they're doing with making collections available online and not just making them available online, but um, but meeting users where they are and not expecting that users are going to come to the EU Screen website to view materials. I'm also really inspired by how EU Screen is trying as much as possible to um, encourage reuse of the collection. Um, and for our project, we're a few years behind. We only got started two years ago and we just launched our online reading room. But um, I'm really interested and, um, and hope to continue learning throughout this conference about ways that EU Screen has encouraged reuse of their collection um, beyond just putting up a video online, um, uh, encouraging reuse by different types of users from scholars um, and the public at large. So our first 40,000 hours of digital material um, was actually, actually selected by the contributing stations. So the stations um, got to choose what they thought was historically significant that they had produced over the last 60 to 70 years. So that um, is the bulk of our current collection and it covers all different topics. You can name a topic and we have material in the archive that covers it. Um, and also um, it covers many different genres from news programming to performances to um, dramatic dramatic uh, theater. Um, so it covers a very broad spectrum, but I kind of see it as a mosaic of local communities in the 20th century, um, and it really does um, document our 20th century audiovisual cultural heritage. Um, for growing the collection in the future, we're really hoping to be able to um, identify materials that have been uh, aw uh, received awards over the last 60 years, because um, those are obviously historically significant and had significance at the time they were created and um, add more of the national programs to the collection as well, the nationally distributed programs.